I'm here with a local Clevelander here, and I just wanted to find out what do you think about Jeffrey Fulmer's comments from the, the police union about that? After all these killings, they still don't think they did anything wrong. Well, I, I think it's offensive uh, and ridiculous. On the other hand, in his position as the head of the union, you know, it's sort of his job to to represent that side of the story, whether he believes it or not. It's hard for me to believe any. It's hard for me to believe that anybody can believe what he actually said. And especially to have the, the, the actual police saying that their union doesn't represent them anymore. Oh, did they say that? Yes. Oh, well, the Cleveland a, Division of Police came out and said that <laughs> the police union does not represent, that his comments don't represent the police. I, I was hoping that they would do that. I hadn't heard that. Oh, that's, that's actually pretty encouraging. Yeah. And then the following day, they arrest another Cleveland police officer for stalking and domestic violence. Well, I, I, it sounds like I, I need to... Uh, Get, get up with the news myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, how do you do? You think there's any hope for Cleveland? I mean, is the is the what do you think? What do you I, what, how, what do you see as a solution to the police as it exists right now in Cleveland? Honestly, I don't think that the that, um, the reforms are enough. If we if we get the reforms that the um, people are demanding in City Hall, I I would be happy. Such I'd as happy body cameras you're referring to and stuff. I, I mean that that's just that's just. That's a nice marginal gain, but um, I think we need more fundamental uh, changes in the way that our society in general treats black people especially. Uh, but uh, that's a long-term goal, and as short-term goals, I, I think that body cameras uh, is probably, probably a good idea. Um, the, the problem is that we're also seeing America turn into a surveillance state and it's going to exacerbate that problem, so it's a trade-off. Um, but, uh, but I do think that given the, given the evidence that police behave themselves better with these cameras, I, I think it's a fair... It's, it's a what are we here trade. for? We're here to protest against police brutality. We understand that all police are not bad. We understand that it takes a special person to risk their lives for someone they don't know. And we stand with the good police who take their oath to serve and protect seriously. But as for the corrupt world police, we stand against you. We protest against you. We want justice. We are tired. Our lives matter. We want justice for Tanisha. We want justice for Amir. And we want justice for any of the fallen that have failed to police brutality. Thank you. Do you uh, what, what do you think of Jeffrey Fulmer's uh, statement about the uh, want an apology from Andrew Hawkins of the Browns? I think that's BS. They don't ask for statements when they advertise and speak out against hunger, starvation, and other stuff. Why should he apologize? We have a right to free speech. If something is corrupt, it's corrupt. Right is right, wrong is wrong. I think that's BS. No one's apologizing. The police should be apologizing. That's right. Did you did you know that the police actually had made a statement saying that that uh, the, the his his statement is not representative of the police department? What do you think about the fact that according to the police, the union no longer represents them? I think that's great that the union no longer represents the police department. But the union, the one fostered all this stuff, they the one protected the police. They the one protected them when they were brutally killing and beating up people. Their job is to serve and protect, not to abuse and kill. I think it's important that we focus on the spoken, but it's also important that we combat the ignorance. There's a lot of ignorance and there's a lot of misinformation that's going around to try and get us to quiet down about this. So I was thinking maybe we could try to, you know, like support ourselves a little more by, you know, Lifting up some signs, instead of just slogans, we have, you know, actual facts. You know, spirit rights do not point the baby gun at anyone. I would really like people to stop spreading that information that he did. But yeah, we still have people who are still spreading these lies. We have all the evidence in the world, and we have people who are spreading these lies against to shut up. I think we need to come, you know, fight that while we're out here with our, you know, our signs, our message. My name is Sarah Jackson. I am half Penobscot Indian and Native from the Penobscot Nation in Maine. 
If we want to know what systematic genocide looks at, looks like, we must look at the native populations of our country. In Rapid City, South Dakota, this week, protesters were denied the rights to march based on the fact that their slogan was Native Lives Matter. We must shout in the streets, black, brown, red, yellow, all lives of color matter. All lives. We are citizens of Cleveland. We are citizens of the United States. And if we do not stand up, march, communicate, and think about injustice on a daily basis, it will take its toll. The system that this country is founded on was tested on the native and indigenous populations of this country. Systematic genocide works. Systematic genocide is being carried out against black and brown citizens today, just as it was carried out among indigenous people centuries ago. The system has not failed us. The system is not broken. The system is working exactly the way it was designed to work. Yeah, you're exactly right. Uh, anything to add? New life. New life. New life, y'all. Cool. You want to uh, at, like answer a couple more questions or something? Sure. Be cool. Yeah. What, what, I, I'm, I've been asking people, what do you think of what uh, Jeffrey Fulmer, the police uh, union rep, has said about uh, Andrew Hawkins wearing the shirt for justice for Tamir and John Crawford, and him wanting an apology for it? My opinion is this, stop the violence, stop the violence. Rice, but we haven't heard a lot of news about uh, uh, T.C. Anderson, who was slammed down to the pavement uh, by the police. They were actually responding to a 911 call, but first responders become killers. It's not a uh, appropriate uh, measure for the good police department to be taking. So we're asking for a couple things for justice for Tanisha Anderson today. We'd like the county coroner to uh, rule her death a homicide. The rule has been stalled. You know, she died, like I said before, Tamir Rice. Tamir Rice's ruling has come out. The unfortunate killing of the 12-year-old uh, by the police officer. However, uh, the other second thing we'd like for uh, Tanisha Anderson, uh, in respect to the Department of Justice report, dealing with uh, crisis, people in crisis, first responders, 911 responses, uh, dealing with persons in crisis or people with, with mental illness. Uh, we need to reform this uh, in the city of Cleveland, and that's what we're gonna be continuing to work on uh, through the uh, city of Cleveland's uh, police department with many other demands that are being coming forth at this time uh, on the heels of the Department of Justice Scathing, scathing report of the Cleveland Police Patterns and Practices of a 20 month investigation. Who are we here for today? Tanisha. Thank you. I'd like to introduce you to Chris. Thank you, sir. Peace and greetings. I'm glad to see the faces. Yeah, even though it's not a lot of faces that I wish to see, but I'm glad to see the faces like you. We're here today because injustice for a beautiful soul not nobody that was lost that was out here doing trash a beautiful soul raised a beautiful daughter and unfortunately her beautiful child had to see her get murdered by her so called protectors and supposed to serve and protect so it's really a dereliction that they're doing these injustices are happening. But I'm here today because I'm tired. Just as uh, I will hope we get all I'm tired. Tired of the, the police brutality. Tired of the laws that's pent against men like me. Men like all those out here in the square. The laws that's pent to keep us going in and out of jail. Recidivism. I'm here to speak for my people. And when I say my people, I'm talking, to, I'm talking about each and every one of us right here today. Unfortunately,
Mike Dana said Tanisha's uncle couldn't be here, but he called and let me know, which is fine. But it's time for this to stop. Only way it's gonna stop, only way it's gonna stop is if we, the people, change it. We have the power. They don't. We have it. We pay them to do what we need them to do. That's police our communities, police our city properly, not improperly. The DOJ is in town doing their tours. Good, but we want to see results. We want to see justice. We want to see laws change.